In this lecture, I will guide you through the PFSense installation process from downloading PFSense image to configuring the virtual machine setting. I will provide you step by step instructions and share valuable insights to help you to navigate the installation process smoothly. So, let us dive in and install PFSense on Proxmox, taking full advantage of its capabilities and features. The installation process is simple. Let me take you to the Proxmox virtual environment. I have multiple nodes. So, these are different nodes. These are multiple devices on my Proxmox. I want to create the PFSense on PVE on this particular node. And before creating the virtual machine, I need to download the ISO image. So, I will show you first of all how to download and which ISO image has to be downloaded. So, I will be going here to pfsense.com, world's most popular trusted firewall device. And we are going to click on download. So, you click on download, you will see here these are the download options. You will be using AMD 64 bit. And here you will be choosing installer, which will be DVD ISO image. Because we are going to upload the ISO image to the Proxmox, so we have to download the ISO image, which is 2.7.2. 558 MB. This is the installation ISO image. We'll wait for this to complete. All right, so download is completed here. And if I show you the file here, it's PFSense CE 2.7.0 release AMD 64 bit. So this is disk image file or ISO image. Now, how we are going to upload this in Proxmox? I have multiple storage devices. In your case, it will be if you have just installed it and there is only one disk. You will see in your Proxmox LVM and local, these two devices will be there. In local, you will be able to upload the ISO images. You can see here LVM has all the disks and local has all these options. So it has the container templates and ISO images. I'll be uploading the ISO image here. Locate the file where the file was downloaded. You can see here in ISO image, the file was downloaded. So, I'll be choosing PFSense CE 2.7.0 upload. ISO image is uploaded here now. You can see the task is OK. And if I go back here, you can see that PFSense CE 2.7 release ISO image is uploaded today. What I'll do now, I'll simply create the virtual machine now inside PVE to make sure that. PFSense is installed there. I'll click on create VM. Create VM means create virtual machine. Here I'll be giving the name to this virtual machine. It will be PFSense dash, for example, tutorial. And here VM ID can be anything. It can automatically generate and you can also give the number, for example, 205. So you can do it by yourself. Here you can add tags, for example, I will say, for example, firewall, I'll say gateway. These are the tags that I created. If you are already using Proxmox, you will know about this. So I can mention here, for example, tutorial, test. So these are all the tags which are added to help you filter sometimes whenever needed. Now we'll move to OS section and we'll choose which OS you are going to install. Of course, we have already downloaded the ISO image. You have to choose the ISO image for the guest operating system. If you are already having the CD or DVD drive and if you are comfortable with that, you will be inserting the CD or DVD drive. So it will directly detect the CD or DVD drive from there. Otherwise, we'll be using CD DVD image. Image file is already there. And where it was uploaded, it was uploaded in local. If you remember, in local, we uploaded this. So I'm choosing local here. Now there will be list of ISO images which are already uploaded. And one of the images that we uploaded was PFSense. 2.7.0 release AMD. This was this is what we downloaded and now we are we have uploaded to Proxmox and from Proxmox we are using this as the installation media. Now here is the OS type. If you are installing Windows or Linux uh, on the Proxmox virtual environment, you can choose the specific operating system. PFSense is built on FreeBSD. If FreeBSD is available, you will choose that. Otherwise, you will choose Linux. We'll be moving next. Here in system, you will choose default. You don't need to make any changes here. Next. Now is the disk. PFSense needs minimum 1 GB of the disk size. And as I'm using this for tutorial, so 1 GB will be more than enough for me for the installation of PFSense. 
I can even use 2 GB. So I'll be moving and I'll be using 2 GB of the disk size. Remember, this is the hard disk size or this is the virtual disk size. And click next. Now is the CPU. How many CPUs are needed for PFSense? One CPU is more than enough if you are using for the home lab or at your home. But depending upon how many devices will be connected, of course, you can make the changes accordingly. So as I'm using multi-core CPU, I can even go to two cores of the CPU and then leave everything else default and click next. Now is the memory. For PFSense, minimum 512 MB RAM is required. You can go for more depending upon your installation. So I'll be going for 1024 MB, which is 1 GB and click next. Now is the network. This is extremely important section here. I have multiple networks connected to the Proxmox virtual environment. And as I mentioned multiple times that you need to have two network cards. You will have the data coming into your PFSense and from there it will go out to the network. Or similarly, data will come from the local network and through the PFSense it will pass and will go to the rest of the world and outside the world. We need to have two network cards. Of course, one network card can also be used. There is a different configuration and if you are interested, you can tell me. I'll let you know that how you can use PFSense with only one network interface card. So VMBR0 will be used as my external network. It is already connected to external network and in network diagram, I have already explained you that. So I'll be using VMBR0 as default for the time being and click next and confirm. In confirmation, you can see all these options available. How many cores of CPUs are there? What type of CPU is there? And what, what is the memory? What is the name of the VM? And where is the ISO images coming, image coming from? And what is the uh, size of your hard disk and so on? So I'm okay with this and I'll click finish. Now, the moment you create the VM, you can see it is being created right now. I'm not going to start this now. I need to add additional network adapter or additional network card into this. If it is, of course, physical one, so you will add the physical network. So I'll be clicking here, hardware. And hardware, you can see right now, I have one network device and which is connected to VMBR0. I need to add one more network card. So I'll click on add and click on network device. And here I'll be choosing VMBR1. So VMBR1 is communicating with my internal virtual machines and VMBR0 is connected to the external network. So I'll be choosing VMBR1 now. So these are two network cards right now. One is Net0 and one is Net1. Net0 is connected to VMBR0. Net1 is connected to VMBR1. So configuration is okay with me. So one is as a WAN interface, another is as a LAN interface. So you can remember this VMBR0 is my external network, which is net zero. VMBR1 is my internal network, which is net one. If I take you to the local network of my PVE, you can see here VMBR1 and VMBR0. These are two networks. And if I show you the networking of PVE, I can click on PVE. And here, if I go to network, you can see VMBR0. It is my external network, which is 192.168.100.2 and VMBR1 is 192.168.240.0. So these two networks are there. One is external. You can see here this particular one is using the gateway and another one is internal, which is not using any gateway. So now I want the communication between this from this network to this network and then to the internet through PFSense. So one setting that you need to do is in case your virtual environment will reboot, PFSense should also reboot. I'll simply click on the options and I'll click on start at boot and this will be turned on. So I'll click OK. Now this VM will start at boot if it is stopped. Now everything is configured here. I simply need to now start this to start the installation. So I'll show you on full screen. Here we'll go to start this machine. So machine will start now and it will boot from the ISO image, it is booting now, PFSense, and you have to accept the license agreement. In case you want to see in detail, you can see that. Otherwise, press enter to accept the license agreement. 
Welcome to PFSense. It gives you three options here, whether you want to install, whether you want to run the rescue shell or whether you want to recover the configuration. I'll explain you all other options, but here we'll be talking about the install. So I'll press enter on install and here I'll be using the guided route on ZFS. These are other options in case you want to have the partition of your disk based on your own choice, how you can manually configure it or how you can use shell to create the partition if you have multiple uh, disks. But I'll be using auto here. I don't want to worry about the partition size and so on. If you are using multiple disks on your computer, it will also help you, ZFS will help you to use the mirrored uh, disk so that if one disk will fail, your installation media is already stored on another disk. So I'll be using auto ZFS here. Right now, it will not create any uh, mirrored pool. Of course, if you have two disks there, it will help you to create the mirrored installation, it will create a RAID, but I'm okay with this. All other options, you don't need to change here. You can see here, one GB of the disk will be used as the swap memory. Here, everything is fine. So I'll be going up on the install option and enter. These options for the RAID, Stripe is no redundancy. Of course, we do not have multiple disks. If we had multiple disks, we can create RAID 1 plus 0. We can create RAID Z1, Z2 or Z3. These are all single, double and triple redundancy. And you can use mirror, which is RAID 1, which means that two disks are minimum required. So as I'm using only one disk, so I'll be choosing Stripe option here with no redundancy and then press OK. Here you need to choose the disk on which disk you want to install. Of course, I'm using the virtual disk on QEMU or Proxmox. So in Proxmox, the disk is called QEMU hard disk. So I'll be selecting this by pressing space bar. So it is selected now and then I'll press enter. Now it gives me a warning that all the data on DA0, which is the disk will be removed. Of course, we know that. So I'll be choosing yes and enter. It will partition the disk. It will do the installation until it is 100%. I'll be waiting and I'll be coming back to you. All right, you can see here that installation is completed. Installation of PFSense is completed. Would you like to reboot into the installation system now? I'll press reboot and the system will reboot now. So it will reboot. It will load the PFSense from the hard disk now. Here you can see VTNet 0 has the MAC address this and VTNet 1 has this MAC address. These both are right now down. So here once you press enter, so it will ask you enter the WAN interface name or A for the auto detection. Of course, if the network interface is already connected to the internet, it will show you that. But I won't be doing that. I'll be using VTNet 0 as my network interface. So I'll be typing here VTNet 0, whatever it shows you. Right now it has VTNet 0 and VTNet 1. Whatever interface you want to choose as the WAN interface, you'll be choosing that. So I know that VTNet 0. And if I show you back here, I'll just go back here in this PF sense in hardware. This is the VTNet 0 and VTNet 1. So net 0 and net 1 is VMBR 0, VMBR 1. So 0 is my external, 1 is my internal. I can go back here. I can do the configuration now. So I'll be choosing VTNet 0 as my WAN interface. And here it shows that enter the LAN interface. So I'll be using A also. So A can also configure it by itself because one is WAN, of course, so another will be LAN. So I'll be using VTNet 1 for the safe side to make sure everything is fine. Now you can see here WAN interface is VTNet 0, LAN interface is VTNet 1. I'm okay with this. Do you want to proceed? I will say yes and enter. The moment I press yes and enter, it will automatically do the configuration and that's it. Now here my WAN interface is 192.168.100.232 because I'm already having the internet gateway. Now PFSense default IP address is 192.168.1.1. So I'll type it here 192.168. Dot one dot one. The moment you enter, it is showing you that connection is not private. I know that because there is no SSL certificate right now configured and uh, the communication between 
my laptop and the pfSense will not be secure and it will not be encrypted which is fine and I will click on proceed. Now you will see here the main page. This is the main user interface. I will be typing admin and pfSense and enter. Now it will give you the message. You will run the setup wizard. Welcome to pfSense software. Click next. About NetGate support, click next. Here is the pfSense. I will say pfSense on Proxmox. And here I can mention syncbricks.local. This is what the domain name I'll be using for my local domain. And here primary DNS and secondary DNS. I will not choose my own DNS. I want pfSense to take the DNS from existing gateway where it is connected to. Click next. I'll show you all these configurations later. This is the time server. Click next. The WAN interface will be DHCP, which means that it will be automatically taking the IP address from the gateway. Now, there would be multiple options how you'll be configuring your WAN interface that I'll show you in the next videos. Choose all this default and click next. Here, LAN IP address. So, I'll be choosing as of now default, but I'll show you in the next videos how we can configure the, configure the LAN IP address and how we can change the IP address of PFSense and how we can change the DHCP and all of that. So don't worry about that, just simply click next. Here is admin password. Default password for PFSense is PFSense. So I'll be changing the password to meet my specific needs and click next. Now reload and that's it. Click finish. Now you'll be landing to the main page of PFSense here. From here, I can keep the information that I need on my dashboard so here are two interfaces van interface lan interface and here you can see the system information so we have covered the installation let us now continue to the next lecture